morning, everybody. It's not morning anymore. It's not the morning. <laughs> it's, it's 8 p.m. Fantastic. Although, does it feel like 9? Because we went back mm. an hour. Did you enjoy your extra hour of sleep? Because I How's certainly did. Cheddar, Sam? You enjoying that? You we just thought we'd have a Coke. Just relax. Mm, a Coke. Welcome to the postbox session. Mm. Was it a session on the end? I think it works. Postbox session. I don't, I don't wow, wow. Are you loving the name still, everyone? Because if you are, why don't you hit those comments and just tell us? Because just hit we need the affirmation, I'm telling you. But <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, how good was Sunday morning this morning? It's good, good day. Why don't you really give good. us some love? Give Liam some love oh, for the you. word oh, that he brought. Thank you. It's not about me. It's not it's about not, it's him. Not, but, but please. It's about Jesus is the about answer. Jesus, Jesus is, the is always the solution. We had a good morning, though. We had, um, we had the most people watch on YouTube that we've had. Amazing. And we had a lot of people tuning for a long time because mm. we see that at the end, don't we? How long they've tuned mm-hmm. in for. So that's um, come on. It was very co- and the prayer bit, I thought was really again very powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, that sort of that oh what a say that yeah, song yeah, just yeah. really helped us. Um, so I, I thought it was really powerful Sunday. Yeah, it's amazing, powerful Sunday. Mm. And uh, although it often is on the last one of the mm. sermon series, I think this whole series has been pretty good. Thank though. you. Yeah, lots of good, testimonies, lots of praying yes. for miracles. Yes. It's been. It's been powerful. I've been. Uh, Have yeah. let me ask you, do you feel like you've regained some form of connection? Ooh. I'd love for you to message in, chat along. Have wow, you, Sam, what about you? Do you feel like? Oh, I don't know if you ever felt like you lost because you were always yeah, so involved yeah, yeah. and. You're very faithful in prayer, but wow! I think this time I have. Yeah, I think I've connected with God in a fresh way. Tell me why. Tell me why. Tell us why. I just tell me why. (laughs) I don't know. I just it's just been one of those times, one of those seasons where it's hit a good point, you know, and God's breaking through, and I hear Him speaking to me, and it's like, yeah, all right. You know, it lockdown. Does, it does feel like there's been a breakthrough, hasn't yeah, it? Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, like yeah. There's a shift in the atmosphere. Yeah, lockdown's been, you know, it's been tough, you know, at times. You're on your own, and yes. and definitely being in the studio now, it, yep. it fills out this hearing from more voices, which I think yes, that does help. Uh, helps. Not, no offense to these guys. These guys no, are we awesome. No, we want, but we want more uh, people coming in. Totally. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just think it's been an. Sam, can I ask you a question? Go for I it. I know this wasn't yeah. planned. But We're going deep already, bro. You're, <laughs> you're known as like a prayer man. Wow, okay. prayer man. Um, you know, th- in this season, mm. have you found that harder? Or has does actually this kind of season aid your intercession? That's a good question. Have I found it harder? I'd say a bit of both, if that makes sense. So it is harder and isn't harder? It is in different ways, you know. I think, you know, it's life is complicated. It's not okay. always Sh- straightforward. Share what's, share what's been hard. What's been hard? You just feel alone a lot, you know. Okay, and fair I enough. I, you know, even if you could, be, you could be the most passionate man of prayer, but you need people in your life. You need people in your life, you know. And I think, you know, we all sometimes, I know you preach, oh, yeah, don't have your own fire, which is amazing. Sure, yeah. But I think you do sometimes, you know, you need, you need it goes up and down, yeah. trenches and troughs, right? And, you know, sometimes you do need someone else to come along and encourage you uh, in that. in that. And to be fair, you are a big encourager and you do like being around people. You're I an intercessor, but you're very public extroverted intercessor in that I am quite yeah. public extroverted yeah. all right yeah. cool thanks yeah. for thanks for telling me that's all right Welcome that's all right <laughs> 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 we hope you had a good time we'll yeah, see yeah. you soon so what's our plan today Sam yeah so we've got a bit of fun we have a, a little band. quiz sporkle is that called sporkle yeah we're doing uh it's, it's a timed quiz timed we have to quiz. we have to get the answers in all the, the answers in the room as time. fast as we can yeah. so why don't you type in the comment if you think you know an answer, even though it doesn't really impact. Oh, right yes. Now, but play engagement. Along. Play along. Be engaged. Play along. Play Come along. on. You'll get more and out of this. We're going to show a trailer for another Flowbox exclusive yes. series. And then we're going to talk through the message. Unpack and it. And that's it. Go deep. This, I mean, I'm feeling it today. Come on, man. Mate, I'm going I'm I'm to preach again. Preach it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to preach the whole thing again. You preached this morning. Thanks, man. Keep I did. I did preach. You that did, did pre- happen. I <laughs> was like, at one moment, I was like, wow, bro. Oh, thank you. Preach it, man. Appreciate it. Even though there's like no crowd. You know, preach yeah. To be fair, and it sometimes can be quite hard because people have to move around mm. to do things or whatever, mm-hmm. and so it, you have to kind of keep going even though people are moving. And stuff, yeah, which is yeah, yeah. But hey, it's fine. You're smashing it. Thank you. And I appreciate Emily. that. Shout out appreciate to Pastor Emily over here, everyone. So right, let's have some fun first. Let's so this do is this. Sporkle, by the way, I would recommend while Sam's setting up, go and check it out. It's like these timed quiz things, and they're really fun. Um, I do them not that regularly, but I have done them before. I'm supposed so to type in. Where do I type in? You just press play quiz, and then okay. I think you type in this other. So what this is, 
is these are book the answers are all books of the Bible, but they've given us a question in another context, isn't it? Yes. So yes. let's choose one. Uh four, four eight, eight fifteen. 15. Oh. Oh, my bad. 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, and 42 are all numbers. Wow, we've got an you answer see, already. We've got an answer already. So it's a book of the Bible, but it's also that thing. So we have to read them, and we've got six minutes to do it. Please play along, Come even on. though we'll have no idea what you're writing. Um, and then we'll see how many we get, Sam. Why don't you go to Sporkle and find the quiz that right be, now? Hey, that's a good you idea. You can join in. It's Yeah, that's a good idea. Just type in Bible in the search engine. Yeah, and it's... And we're not going to cheat by just typing loads of bi- books of the Bible that we know. Unless we're desperate. Unless we've like, got 30 seconds left. Yeah. Stop showing Emily's history. Cheap. Oh, sorry. Uh, you don't know what she's been watching. Okay. Looking at, I don't know why I'm saying <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> All right. She's let's just been looking <laughs> at baby's clothes. Let's get on with the quiz. I'm going to have a mini cheddar. Sip of Coke. It's a lot easier and quicker to have a sip of Coke let's than a mini cheddar. cheddar. <sighs> yeah, it probably takes you a while to eat. Mm. Okay. I've got the first one. Are you ready? Yeah. Ready. Steady. Go. You have to type in. You need, you need to stop having that. Numbers. We lost four seconds already. All right, 1978 Toni Morrison novel. You have to do it in order. No oh way. Oh, my gosh. No. What's the, what's the novel? What? No, we can't next. do that. Right, we next. can't do that. Okay. Oh, you can just do that. Okay. Something disclosed, especially something that is striking or not before realized. Revelation. Revelation. Oh, yeah, come on. Nice. The New Orleans band behind the 1995 hit Good, Better Than... Better than gold. That's that's definitely a book. Be- better than Exodus. <laughs> Exodus. It's not Exodus. Uh, no idea. No idea. All right, next. We'll come back. Romeo and Juliet consists of five of these. Axe. 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 There's the actor there. Uh, Mr. Cook, Mr. Joyce, Mr. Madison. It's no, 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 oh, no, no, sorry. no. Wrong question. Band, band, band with hit, Invisible Touch, or a Sega gaming console. I think it's Genesis. Genesis. Go on. Yeah, yes. Come on. Mr. Cook, Mr. Joyce, or Mr. Madison? Samuel. It's got to be a name. Samuel, yeah. Nope. Joel. There's a lot of names, though. That's the problem. Uh, John. John. Mark. Luke. Matthew. Yeah. No, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't come up anywhere else. Uh, Jude. Jude. Oh, my days. Is Tom, ha- Tom, no, Thomas is Tom, not Thomas in the Bible. Thomas is in the Bible. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, Peter. Peter. Timothy. Oh, okay. Pass it. Pass, pass, pass. We've got four minutes, man. We're going to get smashed. All right. Follows famous to make the name of a cookie brand. (laughs) This is so American, isn't it? Why are quizzes always American? Shout. Right. Next one. I know the next one. Can be full-time or part-time. Job. Job. All right. Numbers. Numbers. Sacred Song. Psalms. U2's fifth album. The Joshua Tree. Oh, nice. I don't know that. Oh, my dad's. Nikki Sanders, technopathi- technopathic child in Heroes. Have you seen Heroes? Oh, I have seen Heroes. What's technopathic, though? don't know what that means. He like, can control tech with his mind. Samuel. Mouth. Daniel. Daniel! Daniel. <gasps> we, we didn't try, try Daniel. Daniel. Okay, don't know. Okay. Children's series by Holly Black and Tony uh, something. Yeah, the the Spiderwick Chronicles. Chronicles. Yes, Chronicles. You're still on the Heroes one. That's the problem. Oh, Come on, Sam. We've got three and no, a half minutes. No, 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 <laughs> Okay. Cron equals. That's it. That's it. The word can follow book, birth, and check. Can follow. Book. Birth. Mark. Check. Mark, Mark. 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 Slang term for a toilet. What? <laughs> the Bible doesn't use slang terms for the toilet. Exodus. Exodus. <laughs> Exodus. <laughs> because it leaves. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. I'm <laughs> with you. <laughs> I, I, we understood it. Um, Leviticus. What on earth could it be? I have no idea. Right. Heads of state, a New York county or a drinking game? Oh, easy. Kings. Wow, yeah, nice. Have you played that drinking game? Is that your favourite no, one? it's not that. Heads of state. The, Pre- Beatle, the Beatles told it's him not, not to... It wasn't m- Kings. How is it not Kings? County. I have no idea. All right, next. We'll move on. The Beatles told him not to make it bad. Jude. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, come on. Judith, someone, Joe Brown and Marilyn Milan are all famous for being these. They're not that famous. <laughs> uh, for being these. What could it be in the Bible? Uh, <sighs> judges. Judges. Nice. Yeah, come on. Follows babe to make a baseball. Ruth, it's yes. Ruth. Yeah, come on. Oh, Romans. It's Romans, come on. Residents of capitals. 
We've run out of time, guys, so we can't go through We've got two minutes. Perhaps the most famous bullfrog. <laughs> Perhaps the most famous <laughs> of all those famous Perhaps bullfrogs. Most famous bullfrogs. No idea. It's no. probably a name, though, isn't it? Uh, Next. A departure or immigration or a thrash metal band from California? Exodus. Yeah, nice. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Webster, Mr. Bone, Mr. Radcliffe. Daniel. Daniel. You should know that. Yeah. You He's a good friend. Actually. My friend actually dated him, but wow. we, we'll talk about that another time. Famous pumpkin eater. Now, there was, in Charlie Brown, there's a famous pumpkin eater, isn't there? Because I, I played Linus once in a show, and we had to sing about the pumpkin king. King! Kings! Nope. No. Don't okay, know. Next. Uh, acts of expressing grief. Are, are, are lamentations. Lamentations, yes. Okay. The Billy had hits such as Piano Man and We Didn't Start the Fire. Joel. Yes. Come on. He had a cool hand. Who? Frozone. Elsa. Elsa. Anna. Anna. Anna didn't have it. Um, he had a cool hand. You've got 55 seconds. No, 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 no. I don't know. Okay, all right. Next Can one. we go back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, keep going. No, go to the last one. Mr. Perry, Mr. Broderick. John? Mr. Sweet. Yeah, no. John Matthew. Matthew Perry. <gasps> yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. 1978 Tony Morrison novel. Just Gen think of books now. Genesis, Just think of anything. Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Judges, Ruth. Kings. Is it Kings? Kings. Kings. No. No. Um. Oh, 23 seconds. Come on. Kings. Lamentations. Ecclesiastes. Psalms. He won't be in his last ones. Like Proverbs. Proverbs. No. No. Oh, can't right. What else can we get? Better than. Better than no idea. The technopathic child and heroes. That's got to be a name, right? We can get that one. Luke. Oh, we've got five, four, three. Here you go. Here's your mic back. Two, oh, one. Wow. You ready, Sam? Here we are. It Song of Solomon. What? Knew it better than Ezra. Never heard of that. Uh, Mr. Cook. Mr. Mr. Joyce. Mr. Mr. Madison, Mr. James. James. James Didn't everyone. quite get that one. Follows famous to make the name of a cookie band. Famous, famous Amos. Amos. That's definitely if you've American. ever eaten those cookies, then please definitely tell American. me because that's oh, ridiculous. Oh, Micah. He was the child in okay. the Heroes. Slang for the term of toilet. John. <laughs> oh, okay. Have yeah. you ever called that? A oh, I, no, to be fair, that was... I have never heard of that in my life. Uh, that's true. Kings. It was Kings. Hey, ridiculous. You obviously didn't move forward. So at least we got that one. Jeremiah the Bullfrog. Jeremiah, Jeremiah the Oh, Jeremiah. I know Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The famous prophet bullfrog. Oh. Peter the Pumpkin Eater. That makes sense because it rhymes. Does Peter it rhyme? the Pumpkin Eater. It's just alliteration. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. He had a cool hand. Oh, Luke. he had a cool hand. Not like a cold hand. Like a sick Jedi hand. It's Luke Skywalker. Oh. You know what I mean? Because he has the... That's, 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 that's how that makes sense. They could have just put... I don't know, something else. He could use the There's force. Lots of ways to Skywalker. He was a Jedi. Yeah, so exactly. Right. All right. And there we, we go. Got that. So how many did we get? We got a solid 18 out of 28. 64%. 64%. The average is 67. Oh, We're just below, below average. How very mediocre of us. Wow. That's what how we feel right Thanks, now. Thanks, Sporkle. Did you play along? If you did, please write your scores. Y um, if they did it uh, Yeah. Home, Anyone above it. average. Then. And also then, whenever you're bored, use Sporkle. It's great fun. Yeah. Sweet. Maybe we'll do the countries of Europe one time. That's the capital cities. You could or name a lot of capital cities. cities. I think I could. So, yeah. yeah. Why right. don't you comment a sporkle that you particularly love and we'll try it. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give try it a go. Actually, if you have any other ideas about oh, things we should do ideas. Session, we'll take them. I was thinking we could prank call the president We're of the United States. That. Or like pastors that we have. Or pastors. Yeah. Prank call Simon and Boris Pastor Johnson. King. Anyway... We're about to play a video for you now, which is a trailer for a Flowbox exclusive sermon series uh, called Now You Can't See Me. Uh, I know mm. some people have watched it already. Yeah. Um, and I'm talking about the power of obscurity, mm -hmm. which Obs means to be unknown and unseen. unseen. It's a very good box set. Thank you. And I would definitely recommend checking out Flowbox, like, subscribe, and enjoy yep. this little trailer. Enjoy this trailer. Hello and welcome to the Now You Can't See Me uh, box set. Yes, my friends, this box set, we are going to look at the power and the value of obscurity. Now, if that word is new to you, the word obscurity means the state of being unknown 
or unseen or even considered unimportant. Now, you might think, Liam, why are you doing a box set on this? Because, my friends, it is vital, it is essential, and it is valuable to your Christian walk to have times of obscurity. Now, if you are listening, you're thinking, is this message, is this box set for me? Let me tell you, this box set goes out to all the workers out there who feel like you go day by day doing a very menial task, mundane task, and you think you're not making a difference. This goes out to you. To all those mums out there who you go through another day of getting the kids through the routine and, and maybe you start thinking about your life and what you're doing, and I want to say this is for you. For those of you that have been praying for a long time for the nation to change or for something to change or revival to come, this box set is for you. This box set is for those times when you feel like you're not doing anything that seems to be important and you look around the world and it feels like everybody else is influential and valuable and important and you might feel like your little life isn't making a difference. My friends, this box set is for you. There are times that obscurity in your life, being unseen and unknown, is so vitally important. And the way that we're going to look at it is we're going to look at Galatians 1 and 2. You see, in the book of Galatians 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Galatia, and he actually tells the stories of times when he was obscure from the world and how that changed him and then what happened when he came out of that. Now, we're going to look at it together. I have studied this and I have loved it. I have loved it. It has, it has lifted a burden off me to like be on demand. You know what I mean? Like to be important, to be influential. It's lifted a burden off my shoulders and I've found such joy in times when it's just me alone with God, times of obscurity, times of being unknown. So let me tell you a bit about Paul as an introduction today, and then you've got four sessions after this to help teach you the valuable lessons you're going to get in times of obscurity. So Paul, if you know Paul, Paul is an apostle in the Bible, and he is an important guy, man. The, the modern Christian world, we still talk about him all the time. He wrote a third of the New Testament. He started so many churches. He traveled. He did amazing miracles, had great exploits. What a man of God. But Paul was saved by walking along the road one day, and a bright blinding light shined in his eyes, and it was the Lord Jesus Christ, and he gave his life to Jesus. And then he was then baptized in water and baptized of the Holy Spirit. And if you read Galatians 1 and 2, he'll let you in on some secrets of what happened to him just after that moment. So first thing we're going to learn about him is that he spent three years after being saved in the road to Damascus in Arabia. Three years in a desert kind of land. And he spent three years there. We don't really fully know what he did, but we are assuming that he spent time getting to know who Jesus Christ is. My friends, imagine that, a three-year sabbatical prayer retreat where you're by yourself, we assume. I'm sure he, there was other people around. And he spent the time getting to know Jesus. Now, you might think three years, Liam, you know what? Three years, I, could, I reckon I could manage. Maybe if it split up a little bit, three years. But it wasn't just that time of obscurity that really made the man that is the Apostle Paul. What he'll let you know is in Galatians 2 verse 1, you'll read a little bit where he says 14 years later. Now, when I read that, I was like, after what? 14 years later, after what? And as I did my research and my study, I discovered that this 14 years time that Paul had, this 14 year time span is unaccounted for. It's not written down. It's not in the book of Acts. You can't read about it in Ephesians or Thessalonians. It's just a time when what we believe Paul was doing was going about just doing the work of an apostle in private, in obscurity. It was not a public platform for him at this moment. You see, my friends, what I'm trying to help you understand is that Paul spent at least 17 years, really, being unknown. Living in obscurity and just doing the things that God had asked him to do. And because of this season, it gave him some great benefits. If you're thinking, well, Liam, that's Paul. Doesn't mean it has to be everyone. Let me help you out. Jesus himself spent a lot longer in obscurity. Jesus grew up in 30 years and we have no record of what he did from zero to 30 apart from one moment 
when he was 12 and went to the temple in Jerusalem. He spent 30 years in obscurity. The son of God spent all this time in obscurity. He's unknown, unimportant, unseen by others, but living in obscurity with God. If you, if you need even more, Elijah spent 18 months in a ravine by himself, then 18 months living at a widow's house. Joseph spent 10 years in a prison. David was called when he was 13, but then wasn't king until he was 17 and spent many times in that 17... Uh, I said that wrong, didn't I? When he was... Uh, he was ordained at 13 and then became a king at 30, 17 years later. You still with me? Yes, you are. Amen. And he spent many times in that season in obscurity, hiding in caves, being a shepherd boy. If you need even more, Moses spent time as a prince of Egypt in a public platform doing amazing things. And then God called him away from the public platform into a time of obscurity. And he spent 40 years living in the desert as a shepherd man in obscurity. My friends, you read the Bible, read the stories about men and women of God, and you will start to see a pattern. There is a season when God calls them into obscurity, teaches them things they need to know, and then sends them back into a public platform. So my friends, there is great value in living some time and having some moments of obscurity. So maybe now's the time to say, now you can't see me. Journey with me as we look through Galatians 1 and 2 and learn what valuable things we can get from times of obscurity. Well, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. We are ready to digest. Are they going to watch that sermon series? Do you think? The obscurity one. No, you can't see me. That's what they just watched. Well, you better see me. Wow. Because it's a... I better see you watching it wow because luke skywalker had a cool hand <laughs> we have a cool sermon series for you guys and you um, remember that famous novel from to tony morrison whatever his name was. tony morrison the, the song oh. of solomon that was a great wow great novel in morrison's 1978 i love morrison anyway let's digest yeah, let's the word digest the word that's what we came here for there we go so here's the bit you've been waiting for you know what to do why don't you share this video subscribe subscribe just cheeky. Subscribe. Just <laughs> subscribe. Honestly, every time you do it, aerobics reminds me of that. Anyway. Amazing. So Liam preached it this morning. I've said that a lot, but man, honestly. I did preach this really morning. That's what happened. Really good word. Um, why don't you comment below your favorite point that he made? Wow. But okay. we will look into a few of them. Okay. Um, so I've picked up just some of my favorite bits that have really impacted me. And I'd love to just to discuss it. And okay. So not questions. It. just unpack a bit just more unpack okay. a bit more sure. uh what's going on um so uh, let me just start off with one of my favorite things you said today yeah you said that you would rather be in the prison with god than in the palace without god yes amazing point like hopefully and hopefully yeah what could that look like in what could it look everyday like? life like what could that look like in my life in well i guess okay so I mean, I say it, I mean, the truth is I want to live it, but it mm -hmm. is hard to, to live that out. The palace, I guess, represents success in a worldly mm. view, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. Like, um, you know, the, the palace is rich, it's the famous, it's the influence, it's the popularity, it's those kind of things. So um, I, I think our problem in the, the, the world today is we want to chase the earthly successes. Mm -hmm. But in Luke 16, 15, you'll see a Bible verse that says, Actually, those things are an abomination to the Lord, which wow. means it wow. actually makes him gag. Mm. That, that makes him gag. Yeah, and yeah. So I'm trying to say is like I'd rather have no worldly success, but still know the Lord, mm -hmm. than have all the worldly success and influence, mm. um, and not know Him. Mm. Because I honestly, like, let just take a moment to really look at those that do make success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, they get a lot of hate and a lot of projection That's and judgment true, yeah, yeah. but also like you look at c celebrities and how a lot of them struggle with life mm -hmm. uh not obviously i'm not trying to judge any of them it's just that's just a common theme mm -hmm. Um, you know, even now th in the lockdown all the celebrities sort of saying the, the thing of like my house feels like a prison and they all got ridiculed for saying that because like we live in a mansion but it's just demonstration that yeah, they don't yeah, feel yeah, yeah. free mm -hmm. you know whereas even with christ no matter what situation i'm in i still happen to feel free mm. And so mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just trying to make the point of like, stop focusing on whether you make it to a palace and yeah, start yeah, focusing, yeah. are you with Christ? Yeah, totally. And that takes real effort. Do you know yes, what I mean? Yes. Because we can think I'm a Christian. I don't struggle with that. Yes. But even as a, even as a pastor, 
of course it's, you know like there's competition there's social media now and yes and it you have to you have to be intentional in yeah i think i think the challenge to run your own race and to know mm-hmm. what god has called you to do and compare yourself only to jesus is of one you have to really consciously choose in this world today mm. simply because we know more crazy i mm-hmm. joked with emily the other day that said imagine that we were like all of this stuff happened 100 years ago whatever we would have had no idea about all the things happening in the world. Mm. I had no idea about Nigeria, you know, yeah, about yeah, the yeah. Middle East. I'd have no idea what's going on in China. I'd barely know about a virus. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. B- uh, We know everything that's happening yeah, because yeah, of social yeah. media, which means that you can automatically try and place yourself in mm. it. Uh, I would say my biggest advice with this is make Jesus your measuring stick, yeah, not yeah, anyone yeah. else. Mm-hmm. If you measure yourself against another pastor, you're always going to struggle. Mm-hmm. Or, or another person, sorry, it's just being from my point of view. Yeah. Measure yourself against Christ. Mm. You know, am I seeing miracles every day? Do I memorize my whole Bible? You know, am I loving? Am I challenging? Am I speaking truth? All of those things Jesus yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. So I've got work to do. That's crazy. Yeah. Compare yourself to Jesus. Yes. We make we him your measuring we underestimate how much that means because he yeah. didn't have a car. He didn't have a house. Sure. He yeah. didn't. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't have, have any worldly success. Yeah. He didn't even have like loads of yeah. followers on Instagram. No. You know, the like only, the only worldly success he got was the rabbi function that's, that's yeah about it. yeah yeah but, um he never even left israel well it, he did technically it was egypt in his in his ministry though in, in his, his ministry, ministry no, he, didn't he never know. even left this country and he spent 30 years in obscurity mad uh, and someone i saw someone tweet recently um say something like jesus spent 90 percent of his life mm-hmm. in private for a 10 percent wow. public ministry wow whereas us we do 10 percent in private for a 90 percent public ministry. isn't jesus and just so amazing. i would just say Folk, which is why you got to watch the Obscurity series, which you just yeah, saw. Yeah, totally. Enjoy that season because mm-hmm. God will have you in it a lot more than you think he would. Wow. Um, but yeah, that kind of stuff really will lift a weight off you. Mm-hmm. And if I could talk a little bit more about the measuring stick idea. Yeah. Remember, God sees you as Jesus. Ooh. You are covered in his blood. Mm-hmm. You are free. You know, so when you go to heaven, he, see you s- he sees the righteousness of Christ upon you. Mm-hmm. So now our aim is to live up to Mm-hmm. That so that's why I compare that, yeah. Because I'm not covered in your righteousness, yeah, or pastor whoever's righteousness. Mm-hmm. I'm covered in Christ's righteousness. So that's my it's good comparison. Man. It's really good. It reminds me of this morning. You even made the point about you're not saved by grace. You know, sure. And yeah. if you're not saved, you know, you are saved. No, by you grace. are. Of course, yes, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. S- you are saved by yes, grace. Let me just make that yeah. very clear <laughs> before you share that out <laughs> to the world. You are saved by grace, but yes. also be sanctified sure. by grace as well. Oh, um, Sam. You preached it there, man. Well, I, I d- this is, and this is a big problem for us in Western world mm-hmm. where we are pretty affluent and comfortable and we do a lot of cool things. Uh, like I just think we have got this idea that actually if we just work harder, do better, put more hours in, you know, we do actually believe that we are the solution to the world. Mm. And uh, the truth is, it is, it is, it is Christ. Yeah. So I would push this, and I would honestly say it is anti-gospel. Mm. That's how deep it is. Come it on, is the man. anti-Christ spirit. Wow. That's what it is, because Christ is saying, I'm the solution for you. Yeah. That's the gospel. Mm-hmm. Whereas the anti-gospel, the anti-Christ spirit is that, no, you have to save yourself, mm-hmm. which is what all other belligen- religions, religions, all other religions and world beliefs are built upon. Mm. They're built on the idea that you work your way to heaven. Wow. But we're... So we're different. Jesus. So when people say to me, what's the difference between Christianity and any other religion? I say Jesus. Mm-hmm. Because in every other religion, I have to earn favor from God. Wow. I have to earn my way to heaven. Even an atheistic lifestyle, I have to, I have to get smarter and understand more reasoning. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah, but yeah. with Jesus and Christianity, he did that work for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saved by grace. Mm-hmm. And if I'm saved by grace, I'm going to get matured by grace. I'm going to mm-hmm. get grown by grace. I'm mm-hmm. going to get sanctified by grace. That's good, man. I'm going to be a better pastor by grace. I'm going to be a better husband by grace. I'm going to mm. be a better father by grace. Yeah. Not through... Uh, yeah, so, but I, what I would say is that makes it, makes it sound like we have to do nothing. Mm-hmm. It's not what we're saying. Our job is to abide in Him. Amen. That's come on, man. I know I'm preaching again, yeah, but it's good. It's that's good. it. Your job is to remain close to Christ. Mm-hmm. The question you should be asking yourself is, Am I actually close to Christ? It's good. And mm. honestly, if I re- if we really went round the church and really asked, Have you spoken with Christ this week? Mm. Have you had a good time with Him? Have you learned from Him? Mm-hmm. Have you listened to other things? Have you, have you worked on the preach in your life? Yeah, I yeah, would, yeah. I, You know, part of me would be scared to hear the answer sometimes. Wow. 
Same with me though. Same with me. Yeah, it's true. Yep. Totally. Cool. Man, we could stop there. You know, just <laughs> yeah, just know. if just g- understanding grace, man. Like it changes everything. You know, just the way that you see yourself, the way that you act, the way you move, the way that you you know what I mean, the way that you even plan your life well, moving forward. It it's your starting point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. You work from rest, not work for rest. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, wow. that's, that's the thing I'd like to really get into he- people's head. Like when we started this church, I wasn't, I'm not stressed or worried because I'm doing it from a place of grace. It's mm-hmm. going to grow by God's grace, not by my efforts. So even if <laughs> it doesn't matter, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I obviously want to get involved, so I dive into Christ, mm-hmm. not dive into the work. It's good. And I, I think that would be, yeah. Mm. Sorry. Love that. No, it's good, mate. Love it, bro. Um, just want to take something you said and make it practical. Oh yeah, sure. For the Let's people watching right yeah. now, we want to make sure that you can apply this into your life. That is the idea. Uh, you said about abiding with Jesus is okay. the most important thing to do, mm-hmm. to receive his grace. Um, maybe just give us your top three tips on abiding with Jesus, on personal time with God. What would you do? To, you know, For maybe someone who maybe says that they might be trying to, but they're struggling right now, to feel like a connection. Um, I'll yeah. Um, I think, first of all, let's say that these things are the successes in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Well done, my good and faith. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Mm-hmm. That's what you get celebrated for, not the palace or the money or the influence. It's good. So stay faithful to him. Mm. So I think one of the things we underestimate with our Christian walk is just keep going. Mm-hmm. Just So my, my practical advice for you, just keep attending. It's good. Yeah, just yeah. keep engaging. Just keep praying. Just keep going to him. Like That is the main half of the battle here. Mm-hmm. Just keep going. Mm. Um, and, and if you can do that, his grace, again, will keep you moving. Like if you keep moving, he will steer you and direct you to the places of the promised land. So just, I would say, that one of the big things I'd say to people is just don't give up. Refuse. Yeah. to give up. The mm-hmm. way that I go about that in my life, because there are obviously moments where you feel like giving up, and we all have that, is I remember the disciples mm. when Jesus fed the 5,000 and he preached a very challenging, controversial message mm-hmm. that everybody who he fed with the miracle left, Wow. apart from the disciples. Man. And when he looked at them, basically they replied, and I, I, this is the phrase I use in my head, what's my other option? Wow. Like they said, who else are we going to go to for eternal life? And so Mm -hmm. my practical thing that I do, this is what I do personally. When I get really down, and you can chat to Emily about this, when I get down or when I feel like, oh, what are we doing? Are we moving forward? Are we bearing fruit? What's the point? Does anyone care? Mm -hmm. I often, and then I sit with myself and I go, well, what's my other option? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what's my (laughs) other option? Do I give up on the calling that God has given me? Do I say no to Jesus? Like, what's my other option? Who else is going to offer me eternal life? Not even other religions offer it me in the way that Jesus Christ offers it. So where else do I go? So I often just say to myself, well, what's my other option? Mm. And even with, like, buying the studio, moving here, I had so many questions. Am I doing the right? Then Mm -hmm. I was like, what's my other option? Yeah, come on, I can't meet physically, so we may as well move forward in one area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd say... A great phrase that I tell myself is when I start having doubts, I just go, what's my other? Skid. Like, if there was another God that said, I will offer you eternal life and I'll pay the price for you so mm. you don't have to, I'd maybe consider it. But yeah. no one else does. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other religions don't. You have to earn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Study them. You have to earn it. So I'm like, well, if Jesus is the only one offering, I'm buying. Yeah. And he, he gives it away for free. <laughs> Come so on. literally, what is my other option? Yeah. That's that's what keeps me going, honestly, when I'm really low. Mm-hmm. And I'd really recommend that to people. Have that kind of, I'm just going to keep an attitude. Because mm. you know, you talked about the, you wanted a practical answer. Really, it's r- more of an attitude shift. Wow, yeah. That I'd want to change in people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, if you said to me, Liam, do you read your Bible every single day? The answer is probably no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, have, an, I have an attitude in my life that I, d- I constantly want to and think of the mm. things of God. Mm-hmm. And so I would say, don't view your relationship with God as like a chore, to-do list, go to the gym, read my Bible, pray. Mm-hmm. Prayer should be every breath. Yeah. It should be a constant communion. The way I talk about it is with my relationship with Emily. We don't have 10 minutes every morning we chat and that's it for the rest of the day. Wow. Because mm-hmm. that would break your marriage. Mm-hmm. So the reason some people might feel like it's not working for me is because the attitude is all wrong. You sit for 10 minutes with God and then you forget about him the rest mm-hmm. of the day. And you're not surprised then he's not speaking to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say have this attitude that I'm communion with God all day, every mm-hmm. day. So most conversations I have with people, in the back of my mind, I'm often thinking, God, do you want to say anything to me through Wow. Me? Honestly, that's just, that's just genuine. Constantly have God on your brain. Mm. Uh, David writes in Psalm 1 where he says, uh, 
the blessed man meditates on the law of the Lord day and night. Wow, wow, wow. So it doesn't mean that you have to be reading it day and night. So mm-hmm. you're meditating on it day mm-hmm. and night. So maybe this week you're just going to meditate on Genesis 40 verse 8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, don't interpretations belong to God. What does that mean for me? Mm. Just meditate on it. It's good, Think man. about it. And actually, I'm really preaching now. Yeah, the word on, meditate, bro, yeah. it comes from the word Hagar, which actually means imagine. Wow, wow. So maybe a better instruction to you to be practical about abiding in God is imagine things with God. Come on. Oh, come on. What, <laughs> it, what did God do with Abraham when he brought him out of the tent? He got him to look up at the stars so that he would imagine a nation of that many wow, people. Wow. So I would oh, encourage amazing. people, imagine with God. And genuinely, um, I, I, okay, I'm preaching now. This Sister Act, if, you, if you watch Sister Act 2, I remember Sister Act 2, Whoopi Goldberg says to the main girl, Lauren Hill, she says, if you wake up and you want to be a singer and you go to sleep wanting to be a singer, mm-hmm. you're a singer. And I remember hearing that. When I heard, I really felt to myself, look, if you want to be a believer, wake up thinking about God. Wow. Go to sleep thinking about God. Yeah. And you're a believer. Come on, man. That's, that's, th- that's, that's what I try and do in my life. So normally the first thoughts and the last thoughts are me imagining life with Jesus. Wow. Imagine miracles. Imagine your family getting saved. And Alice in Wonderland, there's this famous line as well she, where Alice says, um, I try and think of six impossible things before breakfast. Mm. And then I think there's the cat that says, what a wonderful practice that is. Wow. And I love that as a believer. Mm. Wake up and try and think of six impossible Jesus things before Come breakfast. <laughs> and I promise you, your day will be very different. Wow. So I, I, I guess the whole point of abiding it's an attitude shift, not a practical yeah. day-by-day shift. It's so, so good. I hope that helps. Somebody. So good. Can I just say, if you are watching this video, please, and y- if you feel like, because I feel like God is speaking right now, pause the video, go grab a notebook, rewind it for that last few minutes and watch that again. Take every note on that you can. That will change your life. Just that idea, that notion that it's not about practical. Because I have so many people come to me and go, Sam, how do I... Sp- how am I supposed to spend time with Jesus? And sure. that is so good. Sorry, sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure, man. Well, I think the Christian world, we've gone down to read your Bible every day, pray every day. Yeah, Which yeah, is yeah. fine because you should be doing those things, but it should be from a different place of attitude. Yeah, man. If you don't get the heart right, when you put things into practice, it won't work in the mm-hmm. kingdom. It's not how the kingdom works, right? You've got you've to have the attitude and the mind right behind it. So good. So good, bro. Yeah. Man. Cool. Awesome. Anything else? Yeah. Um... That's good. I feel like we've got we've uh, we've gone through some good okay. stuff now. We're going to talk about the next, next sermon. sermon series. So our next sermon series, Liam announced it this morning. It's called M to the Power of Four. I didn't announce the name, but I'm going to. Oh, we're okay. Gonna, we're going to call it M. We to the Power We just announced the name. Come on, announcement guys. <laughs> made. Come on. <laughs> Maybe we'll put that on the story later. Big and announcement. Everyone will tune in. Big announcement. <laughs> yeah. Everyone loves a big announcement. It's going to be like every. It's like proper clickbait now. <laughs> Any time a church says big announcement, I watch. And then, wow. uh, and then most of the time it's like, we're adding a service time. And I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't really need to know that. <laughs> we have a big announcement. M to the power of four. We're going for miracles. Yes. I'm excited. Dude. Can you tell us yes. a little bit of your expectations yes. for this next coming month? What do you feel like God is going to do? So, if I'm really honest, Emily and I had a, 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 a time of prayer probably a couple of weeks ago now, or over the past few weeks. We left the studio feeling... Um, I guess discouraged, wow. if I'm really honest. Mm-hmm. We were wondering and questioning, are we really bearing fruit? Are people still connected? Have we lost people? And I know we have lost some people. I know we've gained others. You know, we, we, we asked that kind of question like, you know, <laughs> are, we, are we purposeful? Like, mm-hmm. And I guess most people ask that question. And so we decided, well, let's pray about it. So we, we spent some time, we were cooking at the same time, I remember, it, and we started praying. And then I felt like God's, you know, we w- I kind of lo- started looking, where is God working? Mm-hmm. Rather than looking where he's not, look where he is and partner with him. Yeah. And we both felt like, and we both kind of looked at each other and said, that was the point he was working. When we started praying for miracles, mm-hmm. you know, and Chris and Suzanne have seen their incredible miracle. We've had a couple other people tell us some incredible stories, mm-hmm. which we'll start to share uh, of miracles and breakthrough. And so we felt like, actually, last month before we do Christmas, so it's mm-hmm. kind of like last month where we teach for the year. Sure. Because uh, Christmas is more celebration. Let's just go for it. Wouldn't it be great to end the year knowing this has been the year where you got healed? Come on. And then man. maybe that would be the mark of the year for you. Come on, man. You know, the year where you got your, your cancer disappeared or your eyesight came back or Amazing. your kid's skin condition disappeared. Wow. Wouldn't that, you'd remember this year for that, not yeah, for the COVID yeah, 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 sickness. Yeah. Come on. So I think man. it's been a year of sickness, 
let's end it with healing. Amen. Um, we're going to look at, we call it M to the power of four because we're going to look at the messianic miracles that Jesus performed. Now, mm. what I mean by that is Jesus performed four particular miracles that wow. proved he was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tagline it something like, what miracle would you need for Jesus to prove himself? Something like wow, that. Wow, you know, wow. like the miracles that prove Jesus is God. Mm. And so that's kind of what I want us to go after. What is the miracle that you are desperate to see that would make you go, wow, Jesus really is the Messiah? Mm. And that's what I want us to press into. It's good. Exciting, man. So we're going to use this time as more testimony time. Uh, okay. So we're going to try and share more testimonies. Um, so we want people to record us, uh, record us, send messages. And yeah. So we can record it. Sweet. And then my number will be up. After the service. Well, I'll probably post it when I'm chatting oh, later. Okay. And I'll post nice. it and say, call me anytime. Awesome. Call Liam anytime. Well, that sounds amazing. Yes. Hopefully. I'm, I'm very excited to see what God yes. does in the month of November. Yes. November is a very, very good month. Although so. I would say I think it's going to be a season. I think it's going to launch us into the next year, Year mm. of the Rocket. Oh, Year of the Rocket. Which we are still going to do. Mm, come I on. think it's going to really ramp it'll work for that so I'm really excited so all I would say is is make sure you invite your friends and family especially if you know True that. someone that True needs that. a miracle someone that yes. needs God proven in their life yes. what an opportunity to invite them yeah. and say come on if it's going to happen 2020 November let's see it happen let's do it. Come on. M to the power of 4 M so to the power of four. make sure you share make sure you message your friends make sure this it's not about us it's about Jesus and it's about them Finding him so as the solution, forward. he is the only yes. solution. Yes, so guys, it's been great to have you with us for Postbox. Been great. We'll give some love in the comments again, and we will see you all. Check out Obscurity, check out Obscurity, Flowbox, and we'll see you soon. See you next week. Peace out.